Today we're doing an automatic transmission, uh, just drain and refill on a 2012 Honda Pilot. I'll walk you through how to drain, how to fill, and I'll show you what you need. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, so here's what you need. You need four quarts of Honda ATF DW1. This is only Honda recommended transmission fluid. This transmission doesn't take anything else besides Honda fluid. If you want to screw around and use a substitute, you can, but I recommend going to the dealer and picking up four quarts. If you want your car to last as long, just stick with the Honda fluid. That's how it's always been. You need a three inch, uh, three eight inch racket and uh, ratchet. And if you're going to be using the fill bolt, a 12 meter, millimeter socket, but I'm just gonna use the dipstick bolt to fill or hole. And you need a crush washer for the drain bolt. Also, a nice funnel would work too. All right, now the car does have to be on level ground or close to it, so I did back out of my driveway and into the street just to have a level ground. You can get away with not jacking the car up because the drain bolt is right here at the 3 8 uh, ratchet. So you can just get under there, loosen that, and just drain the fluid into a nice drain pan. Any size will do. Also recommended is a nice gallon uh, milk jug, an old milk jug, just so you can measure exactly how much came out and then replace it with what's proper. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get ready to drain this. Obviously make sure your e-brake is set if you're on any kind of a slant, which I just recommended you not be on. It's going to take a little bit of effort. This is my ghetto breaker bar. As you can see, there we go. Car does have to be up to normal operating temperature to drain this effectively, so Go ahead and get our drain pan ready. Fluid is okay. It's uh, you can tell it's two years old and thirty thousand miles. Still nice and healthy red though. Of course, we have a side leak I can't really address. There we go. What you gotta do is you gotta go ahead and let that drain. Alright, and of course while this is draining, it's a good idea to take this magnet and wipe it free of all the debris from the transmission fluid. So you can see, it's just a little bit. Perfectly normal wear for 30,000 miles. So go ahead and clean that off nice, as you can see. And while we're in here, it's a good idea to replace this crush washer with a brand new one. That's probably some wind hitting the camera. Nice new crush bolt. Or crush washer, as I should say. That. It's all nice and ready to go. I'm gonna let this finish up real quick, and then we'll uh, get back to uh, filling her up. Okay. Pretty much down to a slow drip. It's been about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this away. Just wipe the area. This car is very warm, it's been driven, so and it's also on a little bit of an angle towards the drain bolt. This transmission has been draining for a very long time, so even though there's rips, I know we have at least a gallon out of there, which is exactly what I was looking for. And tighten it back up. Get that crush washer crushed. Alright, good to go. Thumbs up there, so we're getting it in the shot. Alright, so what I did was I moved everything from the drain pan to the just the oil, uh, the gallon, which is four quarts, just to see what I got. 
this isn't true quality as to uh, the transmission fluid that came out of the car. The oil pan was full of other oil and stuff, so that's all now all dirty, but got about 3.8 quarts, 3.9, so right about four on the money, which is more more than actually what I was expecting to come out, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill her up now. Sweet. Okay, now filling up a transmission can be done two ways. It can be done through the dipstick uh, check hole, or right back here, just below the master cylinder, as you can see now, way down here, um, that little bolt right there has a 12 millimeter socket. It's the ATF fill bolt. What you can do is pop that off. Uh, it doesn't need a new crush washer when you take it off. And you can fill the transmission through there. Or what I found easier for me in my situation right now was to use an extended funnel with another extension down there, down into the ATF fill hole. So that's pretty much how I'm going to attack this. So like I said, I'll have some wind. We're putting in about 3.8 quarts of Honda ATF DW1 that is the recommended fluid. See, it's all shiny red. I'm just going to slowly baby it in just to make sure there's no drips lower down in my funnel system I got going on here. This is very tedious work. It is much quicker to use the fill hole, but for whatever reason, I thought this would be easier because to really to access the fill hole, you need a 12 millimeter socket, some extensions for the three quarter, and um, my tools have all mysteriously vanished, aka somebody has been using them and I put them back. So I don't feel like spending hundred dollars on tools at least before I get my ones for college that they're professionally ordered. So, for now, this is the best option. Um, this entire thing was about $55, including the ratchet and everything, so it's quite a save from the dealership's quote, which was up, upwards above $100 to do the same job. Um, I mean, I'm 17, I have a driver's license, but I mean, I'm driving this car around. I know Honda's in and out ever since I was a kid, which is something that my um, the tour and enthusiast side of my channel doesn't really see this very much, but um, there's a difference between being a car enthusiast and journalist. There's also a difference between knowing how to work on your own car, and this is a very important value, at least for me, because if you don't know how to change a goddamn light bulb in your own car, why, why, what the hell are you doing on YouTube? Alright, all filled up, 3.8. My extension just fell, happens. As you can see, funnel's good. Let's rest that on the claw. I don't have to reach in there and do something about that funnel because that's going to be a pain. For now, let's just throw our dipstick down in there, start her up, burn through the gears, and check the floor. Alright, so at this point in time, you're going to want to start it up. Let it warm up and then uh, run it through all of its gears. Just let it run for a second and park, and then we'll start. Go ahead and start shifting down. Reverse, shift it good. Drive. I'm gonna skip over neutral on purpose.
So you're going to want to do this a few times until it's ready to roll. And when you get down here, push and hold for, oh, you gotta get up to D2 for D3, but you can go ahead and lock it into VTM4. So you can see we're now in four wheel drive. Disengage four wheel drive and engage D3. Alright, well I wound up uh, just finishing off the fourth bottle because there was a little bit of spillage at the end. Um, the design of this car makes it really hard to check the levels, but transmission fluid level should be checked while the car is running and in uh, full operating temperature. So we're all topped up. And good to go.